Hi everyone, I am joining you here from the iconic and beautiful and stunning and historic Guild in Derry, Londonderry after the Access to Finance conference this morning. So I was delighted to MC this for the third year in a row with Intertrade Ireland, Invest Northern Ireland and the British Business Bank. And I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Of course, I will share the key insights that came out of the day, but I also would like to tell you about their format. One of the things I really like about this conference is this. At the end of the day, so today's conference started at nine and it finished promptly at half one. But at the end of it, what they invited everybody to do was to fill out this card. So you can see it here. And on this card, on the back of it is my action plan for funding growth, my key takeaways, my actions, my introductions. So you can see here the way that they give this to everybody. And on the front of the card is a QR code. And on that QR code, there is a link then to the speaker bios, to a gallery of resources, to the feedback form, to all sorts of things. But what I really like is that they actually ask people to take the time to think about what they've got out of the event, what they're going to do as a result of the event and who they want to meet after the event. And the reason I really like that is a lot of us leave conferences and we're full of excitement and we're going to do all sorts of things and we're inspired and we're going to go home now. We're going to think about A, B and C. We're going to take time out and think about it over a coffee and all sorts. And then you go back out and you see your emails and your Slack messages and so on like that. So I really like the way they do this. But the other thing is that I had the opportunity as the MC to walk around and to talk to every table as well. Talk to everybody at every table and ask them, well, what are your key takeaways and what are you going to do? And from there, then I shared that summary back with everybody from the stage. So then everybody else could see what the key takeaways were. The reason I really like that as a format is because it helps everybody to take the time to distill what they're going to do and what impact it's going to have and it also definitely helps with the networking it definitely helps with helping people really think about the impact of the event and also of course it gives feedback to everybody about everybody now throughout the day there was the folk first of all the focus was in debt specifically alternative debt and then the second one was equity there was a case study in both cases i really like that as well they bring on people to talk about what it was like to walk the walk and then the other thing was that we had a panel discussion then with alternative debt providers, including a broker and everybody that is tagged up there in this post. And then we also had another panel discussion about good governance, NEDs, as in non-executive directors and networks. So this gave the building blocks of what leads to successful equity investment, or at least what can partly set yourself up for that anyway. Now, the insights that I would like to share with you is number one, is that it's important when engaging, well, in business, I suppose, in general, but particularly in, in debt borrowing, is to come up with your personal survival plan if the business venture doesn't work out and if you are in a state where you need to consider how you're going to handle your own stress test. It's just, it's a very good thing to do. It gives you confidence. It gives the lender prov provider confidence, etc. Second thing, this came up again and again and again and again and again today, is knowing your figures. Now, Whilst it came up many times, I sometimes wonder whether people know, well, what figures am I supposed to know? So think about what are your profit margins per product, per segment, if your market is, is segmented, um, per target market, look at it per year. So knowing your profit margins, and there's two in particular to know, one is your gross profit and the second one is your net profit. Now certain or entities as well will look for your EBITDA and EBITDA is earnings before interest, tax, uh, depreciation and amortization and that isn't a figure that's directly on your accounts it needs to be worked backwards your accountant will help you find it no problem but that's often the language that they're talking about knowing your projections and also a range of other things that I'm going to mention here but just being comfortable with your numbers I'll tell you one thing that I do is that when I'm watching something like Shark Tank or Dragon's Den is that I listen to the questions being asked in the pitches and I answer them myself so I use that as a dress rehearsal for me to just to critique how well I know the numbers in the business. So that's free for any of you. Check it out in the player. Now, another thing is uh, know where you're going and bring people in to help you. This came up a lot as well as the role of business mentors, the role of mentoring from the agencies, from professional advisors, from people who've done it before, from your network, is you don't have to go this journey on your own at all. And understanding where you want to go and looking at the journey in which you're taking, it can help when you have people on the, from an external, uninvested perspective to help you make that. Just make a difference with that. Also, don't wait to look for money. Don't wait until you need it to look for money. Whether that's debt or equity, start that conversation much earlier than you need so that then you have the run-in, and as in the, the runway-in, I should say. 
and also you have the relationships built for then when you need to really activate them. It's very important to know your TAM, particularly if you're looking at equity. TAM is total addressable market. And it's also even more important to know what realistically you can achieve within that or what you want to go after. Now, also there was a conversation around the softer side of equity. Now, what I mean by that is I asked the first person a question, uh, Ryan Williams, I asked him that question. I asked Mary McKenna that question. A few, few people I asked today that question, and that is what benefit is finance apart from money? And the answer, of course, is the network. It can be the when you have people who are investing in your business, access to their network, their direct maybe access to labour markets, access to customers. Um, if you're engaging with a debt provider, their critique of your business can also help you refine and direct where you're going and all sorts of things like that. But there is a soft side of engaging with finance providers. Relationships are everything. And that's why events like today are so important is to enable people to get out and meet, meet people. When it comes to bringing in a non-executive director, Larissa Feeney had a super answer for this because a lot of people said like, what were you looking for when you looked for an ed? And she said, I identified the skills gaps in the business. And from there, I then thought about what do I, what skills do I need to bring on the board? And then she made her decisions from there. But she didn't start off by thinking, well, what ned could I get or who might be out there? It is, she identified the skills gap first. The, a lot of people talked about backing yourself and being confident. Now, that's easier said than done. But what I will say is backing yourself comes from being clear about your own numbers, your own narrative, knowing the business. You're, as an entrepreneur or somebody directly involved in the business, you're going to know it better than anybody else. And just being sure of that. I think confidence comes from a couple of different places, like having been there already before, knowing that whatever you've done before, you can do it again. It comes from having successful meetings with finance providers. It comes from learning from these types of events. It comes from sharing your experience with other people and them gaining insights from you. All of that can help you build your confidence. The point also was that the conference is called Access to Finance, but what particularly was, re was reinforced here is that number one, there is money to be got, whether it's debt and equity, and number two, there are a range of options to get there. The challenge is actually refining them down so you know exactly which ones you want to pursue. And also, what came up in the summary afterwards from people is that sense of not everybody has it figured out and you don't have to do it all in the one day, but do work on it consistently over time. Now, in addition, other points that came up here is that your network can be very helpful in helping you to sift around to where to start. And some people spoke about the power of a network is when it comes to who could I talk to about this particular initiative, like an innovation voucher or any of the supports that Intertrade Ireland invests in I or British Business Bank offer. But also the benefit of a broker is that sometimes it can be better to go to a broker, particularly for the larger amounts of money or where you need to arrange a combination of finances, going to a broker who can then do the research on your behalf and bring you back an array of options and help you choose. In addition as well, there was a conversation today had that access to finance shouldn't just be about the business owner or the, the, the CFO or the financial director in a business but also those conversations are often had then back with the professional services like their accountant and their solicitors. And that is because people trust them, of course, and just having the same um, continuity of that conversation around, I'm thinking of raising money, what do you think? What do you think of going down the route of alternative finance instead of traditional finance? But it was also raised that, of course, professional services people need to keep up to date with what those options are and be aware of their own biases among them. Also, there was a big focus, naturally enough, as you can imagine, on mentoring, reaching out for that objective voice. And there's a lot of mentoring available by the business agencies and by the councils. And, and of course, you can always go privately as well. Um, some people spoke about the role of a NED could really help them professionalise the business. And of course, a lot of people can be working on the business and in the business at the same time. And a NED can, can bring some clarity to that. Some people also spoke about it's important that funders know the impact of the money so that they can really go the distance with the business and understand what to do. And also loads of people today commented on the female representation that was on the panels on the fact that Awaken Angels is, is now uh, up and running but also that the people from White Rock and from Clarendon, brilliant women who were able to bring a lot of insights to the conversation. We had uh, lots of people who brought a variety of, of perspectives to it. And I have to say, again, to, I want to say a massive thank you to Susan McCain from British Business Bank, to Patrick Dur Dewar from Invest NI, and also to Shane O'Hanlon at uh, Intertrade Ireland for giving me the opportunity to be here. You're just brilliant people, and thank you so much indeed.